Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. I want to talk about the Conservative leadership competition and particularly how Brexit is being discussed and analysed within that debate. Brexit isn't uh, all that the debate is about, uh, but there's enough that comes up about Brexit during the debate uh, to allow us to draw some conclusions uh, and reinforce the impressions that we've already had. Uh, the first thing I'd point to is the exchange on the subject of the Australian Free Trade Agreement. Rishi Sunak said to an audience of farmers, significant that it was to an audience of farmers, uh, that the agreement was very bad for Austri for British farming. Uh, he wouldn't, however, renegotiate it because it would be something, if he attempted to renegotiate it, that might cast doubt on the reliability of the United Kingdom as a, an international partner. Now, this trade agreement um, was touted by Liz Truss, who uh, negotiated it uh, as a great triumph for Brexit. And Tunak was part of the government that uh, agreed with that and acquiesced in that. Now he's decided that it's a, a bad idea. Uh, but he isn't going to renegotiate it uh, because of the sanctity of international treatment treaties. It, it seems to me quite extraordinary that with a, a straight face, Sunak can make such an argument when he is part of the government that is eagerly preparing the legal way for disapplying an international treaty in the Northern Ireland Protocol. The Northern Ireland Protocol, which concerns a matter of greater sensitivity and greater complication uh, for the United Kingdom, historically and politically, and from the point of view of security, uh, than any agreements that we currently might have with Australia. Uh, and yet he thinks um, that the European Union um, has no right to that um, sanctity of treaties that obviously is extended to Australia. It's a, a very strange, almost Alice in Wonderland looking world uh, in, in which we're, we're living for the, the conservative debate on Europe. Uh, there was something similar and parallel that came up um, from the trust side of the argument. Um, trust suggested that there should be temporary visas given to people who were coming perhaps for agricultural work. Uh, this was uh, assailed uh, by the Sunak camp. They were saying that this brought out, this represented the inner remainder of Liz Truss. Uh, this was very illuminating because it's part of the Brexit ideology, the Brexit religion, uh, that there are no problems associated with Brexit. So anything which is suggested in order to mitigate those problems or even cure them uh, is disloyalty. Uh, it's, it's heresy um, because uh, everybody knows that we can have our cake and eat it and that Brexit is not accompanied with by any disadvantages. Interestingly, Sunak himself um, seemed to be saying that there were disadvantages to, um, to Brexit um, in his testimony to the House of Commons earlier in the year. Uh, and there is an exception to the view that there can't be any downside to Brexit, uh, which is Jacob Rees-Mogg saying that the French are responsible for delays at park at uh, at queues uh, in, uh, in to enter France. Uh, that, of course, is uh, uh, a liberty that he permits himself um, because it's blamed on the French, not blamed on the people who brought about Brexit, who are the people really responsible for the setting up of boundaries, the setting up of, of borders, um, which act as barriers to free trade and to free movement. Of course, the exchanges between um, Sunak and um, Truss have been characterized by frequent references to getting rid of red tape and exploiting the opportunities of Brexit. Um, all these things are, are very vaguely specified, and, and in most cases, they simply don't exist. Uh, but there's a reason why they simply don't exist. Um, most of the European legislation over the past 30 years has been very much shaped by the United Kingdom as a large and skillfully negotiating member of the European Union. Uh, most of the things that uh, are now being advocated in the way of levelling up or regional policy could have been done by the United Kingdom government that wanted to within the European Union. And there's a danger that this government will go down the uh, road of divergence simply for the sake of divergence from the European Union. Um, and that, I think, would be a, a very dangerous thing, um, not least for the city.
we've heard it said that English exceptionalism is a, a major element in Brexit and for what it's worth, that's part of my analysis as well. But English exceptionalism has found its part in this debate um, on the Conservative Party's future leadership. Uh, we've had uh, Liz Trust talking about um, uh, Nicola Sturgeon as simply being uh, an attention seeker. And she was slightly less, but similarly rude about Mark Drakeford. Uh, it's uh, illuminating that the people who live in the Westminster bubble uh, have so little respect for people who have democratic mandates outside of their bubble. It may be that Liz Truss, if she pursues this um, provocative and arrogant approach to de democratically elected um, governance, govern government figures from elsewhere in the European Union, um, will be just as much uh, of a, a facilitator of um, uh, Scottish independence, if there's a referendum, uh, as people thought Boris Johnson would be. Uh, there's uh, an irony here. Uh, most of the arguments in favour of Scotland's remaining within the United Kingdom, which I agree with, are precisely the arguments that uh, were valid uh, for the United Kingdom to remain within the European Union. Uh, the Conservative Party finds itself in the position uh, of wanting to preserve one union, uh, having left and doing all it can to undermine the European Union. Perhaps the most remarkable uh, observation from Liz Truss in the course of this uh, campaign um, was the claim that um, the European Union only recognised the force of strong strength, and she herself possessed that strength. Uh, this is a, an astonishing level of self-deception. The European Union is interested in and conscious of strength, but it knows that it is in the stronger trading and negotiating position than is the United Kingdom, particularly on the Northern Ireland Protocol, where it has the support um, of, the United, of the United States. Um, far from being in a stronger position as a result of saying that she's in a stronger position, Liz Truss may well find herself uh, increasingly um, under pressure from her extremist backbenchers to demonstrate this strength. They will say to her, uh, one more push. Um, the European Union is about to give away uh, in the same way as, um, says the ERG and some of its acolytes, it, it did on the trade and cooperation agreement. The trade and cooperation agreement, however, proves the precise contrary. It proves the weakness of the British position. It's something that helps the European Union to export its goods and food to the United Kingdom, um, but doesn't help the United Kingdom to export its services. Services, of course, being much more advantageous uh, in economic exchanges for the United Kingdom um, than, than goods. So over the past um, uh, few um, months, we, we've had some unedifying remarks which went beyond Brexit. We've had the talk about vilifying the country. We've had the personal animosity between the, 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 um, the co competitors. Uh, we've had the absurd promises um, of tax cuts, um, which can't possibly be, be achieved. But I'd like to conclude this um, analysis, this, um, these observations on the leadership uh, contest, um, by talking about something that isn't directly related to Brexit, but which is very reminiscent of the way in which Brexit has always been discussed and defended. Liz Truss suggested uh, that in future, um, civil servants or indeed all the public sector uh, who worked outside London uh, should be paid less than people who work in London. Uh, this clearly hadn't been thought through in its details to whom it should apply, what the amounts involved would be. And the situation was made much worse by casually tossing into the argument the figure of 8.8 .8 billion pounds that supposedly was going to be um, saved by this, um, this initiative. It clearly hadn't been thought through. The figures were fantastical. And when um, she was forced to withdraw, to re resign from this position, um, Liz Truss started to blame the media, her political opponents, everybody else who she said had been misrepresenting her. Does that remind you of anything? It reminds me very much of the way the Brexit argument has been conducted in 2016 and in the six years since. 
Uh, we've got another four weeks of this to look forward to or to endure, uh, but I suspect it's not going to get very different. Um, if you thought that the Conservative Party was capable of holding uh, on the subject of Europe uh, a rational, moderate, informed debate, then you'd probably need to have your head examined anyway. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.